The animals must enter Noah's Ark in the proper order. It is elementary. Someone tried to force this safe. Holmes, Murray has just found a key in the garden.
Holmes, Murray has just found a key in the garden. It should be done quickly. Closed. Watson, over here. My God, this man is dead, Holmes. Brilliant deduction. I thought perhaps he was tired and decided to rest under a pile of potatoes, which in turn fractured his skull. Watson, you see everything but fail to observe. I do not have time for trifles. Oh, really, Holmes? You go too far. Watson, tell Constable Fletcher to contact Lestrade with all haste. Now, I'd like to look around the house. All right, Holmes. Size six. I recognize this handwriting. This handwriting is identical to the writing on Monsieur de la Mazardier's visiting card.
Footsteps, size 10. Did you learn anything? Good. I will go see what I... As you... The station master assured me he clearly saw Mr. Fowlett board the last train to London. But as Constable Fletcher can attest, the body in the cellar is without question that of Horace Fowlett. Do you have the station master's statements there in your notes, Watson? Of course. And be sure that... It is neither the right place nor the right time to talk about this. We must hurry. I fear if we do not act promptly and with all haste, this second dead body will not be the last. Let us return to Baker Street. It seems to me that we have gathered all of the key elements, Watson. However, before we retire, let's summarize our findings. The questions should be answered yes or no and justified by the evidence or testimony received during the investigation.
It is simplicity itself, Watson. We have answered all the questions. We shall examine the evidence acquired yesterday. A wood trinket, substance from Fowlett's washstand, and the gloves I found at Sheringford Hall. We shall examine the evidence acquired yesterday. A wood trinket, substance from Fowlett's washstand, and the gloves I found at Sheringford Hall. A very fine white cotton. I recognize the style of this trinket. Let's examine it under the microscope. Greasy substance. Very interesting. I could not wait for you much longer. We have but a brief moment to discuss your notes before joining the inspector at Sheringford Hall. Paul Lestrade must have spent a terrible night. My word, Holmes. Even you have admitted that this case is uniquely perplexing and difficult. You are, of course, correct. I still have not arrived at a reasonable and definite explanation of these events. You see, Watson, our success lies entirely in our ability to sift through the vast amounts of facts and evidence we have at our disposal and discern which items are of true significance. We cannot allow ourselves to be blinded by the superficial logic of forced hypotheses. We also must not overlook the trifles, as by their very existence they can destroy the most solid of theories. Watson, consider this. All persons intimately involved with the preparations for the reception knew the precise position Sir Bromsby would occupy on that stage. We must remark that they had this knowledge for at least a week beforehand. Numerous experts have made much of the fact that the deadly shot was of unnatural precision. We have also learned that Horace Fowlett was a renowned expert on all types of mechanical devices and automatons. Then Fowlett is found dead a mere two days ago. These facts give rise to a serious line of inquiry. I find your deductions quite probable, Holmes. But how can we explain the guest list with notes? Any probable theory about these events must correspond in all ways, including the smallest of details. Watson, I have a general idea of what you discovered during your return to the Flatham railway station. Please correct me if I get any detail wrong. You learned from the station master that several minutes before the arrival of the last train to London, two men entered the station one after another. First, there appeared a tall man clothed as a worker. His hat was lowered to hide his eyes, his right hand bandaged. He took a place in the right corner near the platform. A few moments later, Horace Fowlett came in and sat down on a bench. He spoke briefly with the station master and by all appearances seemed to be freezing. I can add that you have probably learned that the station master began to work in Flatham only four years ago. The rest you can tell yourself. Oh, really, Holmes? You were right concerning the information I received from the station master. When I entered the railway station... Hello. Uh, if you could, I need some information regarding the last scheduled train to the north, specifically the one that ran two days ago. You're one of those fellows from London working with Fletcher, aren't you? Wait a second, let's see. Two days ago, or rather two nights. That was the night when Mr Fowler was here. Did you see him? As clearly as I see you now. But he didn't seem well. He was all muffled up, and every time he opened his mouth, it was to cough. The people from the village say that he's an odd one who's always amusing himself with geegaws and puppets. Do you see him often? No, I don't know him that well, because he didn't travel very often. I didn't think it was a good opportunity to make his acquaintance, but he wasn't able to say more than a few words without suffering a sudden coughing fit. 
It seemed he was travelling to the north. However, I cannot say with any certainty that he arrived there. Was there anyone else on the platform? Yes, there was a fellow. I could see his face beneath his cap. For a second, I thought he had a revolver in his pocket. But then I noticed that it was merely his hand. It was all done up with a large bandage due to some wound, I suppose. Where was he, exactly? He stood in that corner over there. Mr Fowlett arrived a bit later. I heard the sound of his coughing for about five minutes after that. When the train arrived, they boarded the same carriage. And where might I find this train carriage? Why, right here. They always use the same carriages when they put together the night trains. Aha, and here it is. This is most advantageous. If it will be a help, I can hold the train for one or two minutes at the station, so you might have a look inside. Thank you very much. Well, I must investigate these matters. Until later, sir. There is nothing of interest here. Someone has forgotten their cap, and I believe that hairs on it are red. It could be evidence. A Chirapaki cigarette, the same as Holmes found at Sheringford Hall. Hmm, a red hair. This is splendid, Watson. I did not dare to disturb your thoughts on our way back to London last night. I had quite forgotten about this hat. for you today, Mr. Holmes. Come near, Wiggins. Mind you look sharp. There'll be an extra guinea for the lad that finds him. Goodbye. We must leave now, Watson. Let us return to Sheringford Hall.
Cabby! My respect, madam. It would seem that you have received good news. Oh, it's Miss Bromsby and her admirer, Lieutenant Harrington. It is wonderful to see love bloom despite such tragic circumstances. Have you ever met Wyatt Collins? The nephew of the late Sir Bromsby. Oh, I have seen him just a few times since I was hired at Sheringford Hall. He stopped visiting the hall because of a quarrel with his uncle, I think. How would you describe him? He was a very tall and slender young man with a bright red hair. He's not well mannered. Have you seen Inspector Lestrade? He is with Miss Bromsby and Lieutenant Harrington in Sir Bromsby's office. He's waiting for you. Thank you for your assistance, Miss Lambert. You are surely welcome. Hello. You seem to be in a fine mood. Oh, yes, because I am sure that Miss Bramsby and Lieutenant Harrington will make a splendid couple. He's very handsome and rich. Wait, and how do you know this? The brother of my cousin's boyfriend is currently employed in the Queen's Army Hostel. He said that the Lieutenant gave him a very generous tip when he carried the Lieutenant's trunks during his move. You don't say. Yes, and if they decide to get married and make their home here, we won't be afraid for our jobs. And considering their youth, the family wouldn't stop growing any time soon. I used to be a nurse, you know. Well, I must leave you now. Please say hello for me to your doctor friend.